Hey, welcome to GC365. Hello, Pastor hello. James here from the Gold Creek Lake Stevens campus, and I am joined here by... I am Mariah. I'm the children's pastor at our Lake Stevens campus, and welcome to GC365. GC365. Day... Something. Something. May 15th. I know <laughs> May, that. I know it's, it's May, 15th. May 15th. We know what day it is. Exactly. So whatever that's day. the most important So it's part. 15 days into May, so whatever number in the hundreds is where we're at, but we are on day... May 15th. And, and we're crushing it. We are crushing it. <laughs> I am still up to date. I'm actually even ahead. How are you doing? I am up to date. Okay. I'm not ahead. Uh, I'm not as um, much of an overachiever as you. Well, it's not that I'm overachieving. It's the stories leave themselves at a cliffhanger. I'm like, no, no, no. I got to keep going. And then I just keep <laughs> listening. It's and as if reading. we've never done it before. I know. Or heard I've, this story before. I know. But it doesn't matter. I wonder it's, what happens to Noah. I wonder. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's new every single time. There's something new you find out. But today we're going to be talking about David and the Goliath. Yes. And, and the Goliath. And, and Goliath. And we're also going to talk about Jesus a little bit as well, too, because obviously everything in the Old Testament leads to the New Testament. Love but it. as we kind of kick off David and Goliath, I wanted to I wanted to throw a word out there. And I'm going to throw a couple words out here today. The first word is offensive. Mm. Yes. Everything's offensive. Everything's offensive. Right now, especially, everything's offensive. <laughs> so this is kind of a, a very appropriate topic that we're talking about today. But Goliath was being offensive to the people of Israel. He was mm. literally using the name of God to hurl insults at the people. Mm -hmm. And David steps up with a rock and a stick and says, I'm going to take care of business. Right? Yeah. Exactly. But it was the offense of Goliath that kind of springboarded this thing. And so I thought this would be fun if we talked about stuff that have offended us or we've offended someone else and you kind of just share that little detail. So is there something that you have done or has been done to you that was offensive? Well, I'm never offensive. I'm a gem all the time. I don't disagree so with that. <laughs> Good job. I would have been offended if you hadn't agreed with me. I knew that. And uh, <laughs> that's why I agreed with you. But I was thinking about a time that I had, you know, a lovely ex-boyfriend of mine who um, basically called me a nightmare when we broke oh. up. I mean, I'm, I'm not the easiest person to be with. I'm sure you can ask my husband. He'll agree sometimes. But I remember him saying something about, you know, you have all these traits, these personality traits, you're kind of a nightmare to be with. You're going to have a hard time finding somebody that can put up with all that stuff because, yeah, you're you're a nightmare. That's uh -huh. the word he is. And that was offensive? I mean, it was pretty offensive. <laughs> I didn't love that. Nightmare and that you're going to have a hard time finding me. someone? No. no, yeah. There was a lot of other things that were said too, but that was like what resonated with me. Like yeah. the word nightmare. Yeah, you're a nightmare. Cool, thanks. Oh, that's 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 what every woman dreams to hear, right? We it's love like a that. Disney movie princess <laughs> right there, right? You want to be told you're a nightmare and then birds sing with you. That's how it works. Yeah, I don't want to be called a princess. I don't no, want to be all beautiful a or wonderful. I'm a nightmare. That's what yes. I like. So that so was pretty bad. What that, about you? Uh, well, for me, um, I mean, I, again, I'm not easily offended because I, I think true. it's just my laid back personality. And you've, you, you know that one first. It actually, actually is true. It's not sarcasm. That is true. I think she has a game where she's trying to see if she can ruffle my feathers and it just doesn't quite work because I know she's doing it on purpose. So that's the other thing, too. But uh, pushing. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, when I was thinking about this and I thought about it a lot yesterday, I thought about it a lot today. I thought about it as I was driving in and because I'm not offended easy, it took it took some time. But right now there's a there's there's this really big. I guess, push against Asians, right? There's this whole push against Asians. And being an Asian guy myself, I've heard every derogatory term you could possibly mm. think of multiple times. I've been challenged to fights just because they, quote, I know Kung Fu, which I don't. And so they wanted to beat someone with Kung Fu. And and so I've, I've kind of faced the gamut of that. And I remember one time I was in geometry class, okay? And this is going to be very stereotypical Asian, right? And we we're picking partners. And I was like the first person picked, okay? Because... Well, you are really good at math. Though. I am, but I'm not good at geometry. Oh. But they didn't know that. So they were like, oh, he's Asian. He oh, must be good at math. math. So this guy picks me, and he's so excited because he's thinking, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let James do all the work, <laughs> and I'm lost. <laughs> because it's like reading it's and shapes. costumes and shapes, and I was like, there's no numbers. And and so I was lost, and we're doing our project, and he ended up doing like 90% of it. He was so mad, and he just looked at me. He's like, what's the matter with you? Why can't you do this? I thought, you know, you're supposed to be good at math. And I'm like, well, actually, I am, but not at geometry. So then he says, what good are you? <gasps> yeah, he says, what good are you? No way. Yeah, he did. He said, what good are you? And so I don't think he meant it in the, same, in the sense that my life has no value, but he was frustrated that he did 90% mm -hmm. of the work. Mm -hmm. But I remember that stuck in my head because, yeah. ha, huh, what good am I? And the idea of worth really popped into my head. The first word was offensive. Worth is kind of the, the second part of it. Because when we look at Jesus, he does the same thing. Like he just, he preaches and he says, I am God, I am Messiah, I'm here for you. And his disciples leave him, not the 12, mm -hmm. but he had multiple disciples and they left him. 
because the word says they were offended. Mm. Yikes, right? So we can't escape being offended. We can't Mm -mm. escape offending other people. So how do we combat that? And I kept coming back to the idea of worth. When we see worth in other people, then it changes our perspective. It changes our thoughts. It changes our speech. When we see someone has no worth, then we're biting, we're sarcastic, we're angry, and we just attack, right? And for you, in your example, your ex-boyfriend, who I'm glad you didn't marry because I really like Mark. uh, (laughs) I do too. Yeah, I I just like like to clarify that. I like him a lot. I I like him a lot too. And so I'm glad you married him. (laughs) Thank you. But uh, he obviously did not see you for the worth that you have. Yeah. Not only the worth that God sees in you, but other people see in you as well too, which is why he made those comments. True. It's like a therapy session. Uh, it is. It's I'm kind of loving welcome it. Welcome to Dr. James. I don't have my doctorate yet, but welcome to Dr. James. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it just so that I can have a show like this. And we'll like get a little this? couch. Okay, I mean, like I'm just, down. Like a little couch. I'll be your first member right here. First audience person? Yeah, I don't even know what you call person. it. No. Person on What do they show. call that? Guest? Yes. Yes. Anyhow, there, there we go. We'll do that. But there's that there, there's that worth value yeah. that we're talking about. And I think as we're we're trying to figure out how to be less offensive we need to understand that God sees worth in us, right? Mm -hmm. God sees worth in you. God sees worth in you. God sees worth in me. He saw so much worth that he gave us Jesus, which is what the New Testament readings. I came, I am, I am God, I'm here, the Messiah, because he sees worth in us. And I wanted to kind of wrap this up with um, the idea that worth is what drives restoration in in relationships, right? Because if you don't think that the relationship is worth it, why would you even try to restore yeah. it? Yeah. Or if right? you don't think the person has value, why do you see yourself with them? Like, or in a relationship, a friendship, mm-hmm. relationship, yeah. whatever. Why do I do this? Mm-hmm. If you're- Coworker, any yeah. of these people. I mean, neighbor, son, daughter, mother, father. There's always going to be friction between relationships. And when you start to look at people the way that God does, that is where I think that that connection starts. And not only that, you see worth, but a key for me was humility. Hmm. coming before them humble, just saying, I messed up. I said this. I did not mean it. I am so sorry. Or yeah. if someone says something to me, this really hurt me to my core. I don't think you meant it this way. Can we talk about it? You know, and there's that spirit of humility that for some reason people respond to. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, we go back to how Jesus was willing to say the hard things. He was willing to put in the work with the disciples, mm-hmm. with the people that he was just trying to minister to. And it's just like in a relationship. When you find worth in somebody, when you find value in somebody, you're willing to put in the hard work mm-hmm. to make sure that it's a good, solid relationship, which Jesus did with his disciples. And we see that firsthand. And we see how we can then replicate that in our own relationships yeah. by being truth givers and being honest mm-hmm. and being um, just somebody who is worth being around. You know, you add worth to yourself by showing others mm-hmm. worth as well. Absolutely. And Jesus, he didn't he didn't just see worth. He he died for that worth, yeah. which is the ultimate, right? When we're talking about a human relationship, having having the just the thought of I would be willing to die for someone, that yeah. shows where you see real value, right? Like I'm I mean, I would die for my kids, I would die for my wife. Uh would you I, die for me? I might. <laughs> If I if I didn't have to think about it a lot, then I probably would react instantly. But if I had to think about it, I'm like, well, I think Mark could handle it without you. So he's He's still pretty young, and I might debate myself out of it. But if I had to react, I think I would. You've got three small children to take care of. (laughs) That's right. He'll just move in with me. It'll be fine. He'll move in with you. Sure. I'll be I'll be his like sister wife kind of situation. (laughs) Not in a weird way, but you know we'll have some fun with it. But, you know, that's the the worth, the value. That's what we're talking about here. And as we kind of sign out, as we close this out, everyone that's listening, everyone that's watching right now, please know that you have worth. I don't know what someone has ever said to you that might be offensive. You have worth. It does not matter what they think. It matters what God thinks. And secondly, maybe you said something to someone that is massively offensive. Here is your opportunity to see value and worth in them and to humble yourself the way Jesus humbled himself and died Mm. for us so that we can restore these relationships. And so that is my encouragement to you as we sign off. And Mariah, do you have anything else to add as we? No, I mean, listen, you like crushed that. Like I love crushing stuff. You just preach. You just brought the heat. So I hope you were paying attention and you were like gleaning all of that wisdom because listen this little nuggets of jamesism nuggets we like nuggets Nuggets dipping sauce of gold yes with the holy spirit (laughs) dipping sauce chick-fil-a dipping sauce you are the chick-fil-a of nuggets of wisdom i don't know what to say to that one but thank you we appreciate you (laughs) guys joining us we're just rambling now so thank you for joining (laughs) us and we'll see you guys next time